Today, we are checking out a build from one of my favorite movies, Spirited Away. Today, we're looking at my recreation of the bathhouse or onsen from Spirited Away. And uh, today, we're going to do a little bit of a virtual tour. I tried doing a speed build for this, and it was way too detailed. But this is a huge build. It uses all the max amount of floors that you can have in The Sims floor. Four? There are seven floors. There are so many rooms, just about every set, I believe, that was actually featured in the movie. I think this movie has a special place in a lot of people's hearts. I don't think it's a controversial statement to say that this is probably one of the best anime movies of all time. <laughs> and I also think that this is an entry point for anime for a lot of folks. So I thought that this would be something really cool to recreate and share with everybody in The Sims 4. As we get started, I do also want to mention that this build is available on The Sims 4 Gallery for you to download today if you would like to add this into your world. I created this on a 50 by 50 lot in the world that came with Snowy Escape. Uh, there's a really nice lot that is right next to a river, which I thought was perfect for this particular build. And today we're going to tour this lot it's loosely in the order of appearance for each space um, in how it appeared in the movie. So. Just as a heads up, I have added chapters as well, just in case there are specific areas that you would like to see over others. So feel free to navigate and tour the building as makes most sense for you. So without further ado, let's get started. And yeah, so we're going to check out some exterior shots first before going inside the onsen. And as you can see here, uh, to utilize the most amount of spaces I could and to try and get that sort of very tall effect that we see in the movie, um, I dug out several basement layers, all of the basement layers basically that we can have to extend the building further down into the ground. I will also say, again, as we're getting started, that we use basically all the functionalities that are available within build mode for this build, aside from rounded walls, because I still can't support rounded walls. But uh, we use we use a lot. So we have um, various platform levels on each floor. We have certain areas that are two floors tall. Um, we actually have the main bathing area, which is three stories tall. As I was player testing this, which I did do extensively, um, I noticed that The Sims made some really interesting routing decisions while they were navigating the build themselves. Um, so I would just say keep that in mind um, if this is something that you do end up downloading for yourself. And then as we look at the back of the building, we can see here uh, a very different kind of vibe. This is where in the movie, all of the sort of servants are living. This is where the kitchen is. This is where um, all these sort of storage areas and things like that are. So it's a very different feeling from the front of the building. Uh, and we can also see at the top there the entrance to Yubaba's office and living quarters. And as we enter this building, uh, I will recommend that you hold your breath as we cross this red bridge. Let's do it together. Okay, so anyway, first what we're gonna do here, we have two gates on either side to enter either of the courtyards. The courtyard here on the right-hand side is the first one we're checking out, and this is where the outdoor onsen is. Here we have entrance to the building from some shoji doors there, and then we also, by going through the building, can get to the other side here, which is where the outdoor onsen is. And yeah, this is just a really chill spot to relax in. I tried to really match the foliage the best that I could. I really tried to match the landscaping to the movie. In the movie, there's really beautiful flowers everywhere throughout these gardens. Uh, there are some really cool spherical bushes that are, you know, very beautifully manicured. Um, of course, we have these nice uh, stepstones that are running throughout the space. Uh, some really big, beautiful shoots of bamboo around. But yeah, I just wanted this to feel really welcoming, relaxing. If your sim is coming to the outdoor bath, I wanted this to be a really nice spot where you can take some cute pictures together. I will say we are kind of cheating a little bit here by going through this foliage to access the actual uh, bath. You do have to go inside of the building and come out, but you can do that from uh, multiple different points, actually. As we leave this section of the garden, we'll be going over to the left side. Again, we're going to check these out in sort of order of appearance. And so here we have a beautiful cherry blossom tree. And if you remember, this is where Haku takes Shihiro uh, as soon as he intercepts her in the spirit realm for the first time and instructs her to go through this small gate on the uh, left side of the building and run down some very treacherous steps. So we will do the same. Uh, and you can see here we have some very steep staircases and no railings, <laughs> of course, to be accurate to the movie. And excuse this sort of little spin here. I couldn't avoid this when I was taking this video. Uh, and here we see the entrance to the boiler room. So this is where we meet Kamaji for the first time, and this is Shihiro's 
first experience in the Spirited Away bathhouse. So down here we have, what I realized is that Kamaji actually lives in this space. So he has a small sort of like little sink and bathing area here. He sleeps in this space as well. I did try to put skill building items actually throughout this build because uh, you'll, you'll see later there are several living quarters in case you want to spend some time here. So uh, in that area, if you notice, I had a juicer um, because I thought that that would be something fun to do and it matched all of the sort of pipes and, and things around. And here we have the boiler room. So this is a massive room in the building. It's two stories high. We have cabinetry from floor to ceiling. And in the top there, there's some open shelf storage where you can see all the different sort of herbal elements that Kamaji uses to create the bath water for all the onsen in the building. Here we can see I use little mouse holes to recreate the little homes of the soot sprites that Kamaji has enchanted to help him do work. You can see we have some coal scattered on the ground here as well. And then this is my attempt to recreate the massive boiler from the movie. I use a lot of objects from actually high school years and the get to work pack to recreate this. And I think it's pretty convincing. Uh, here is Kamaji Station, which I don't think he leaves very often. So he has some nice big comfy pillows and then a lot of little personal objects that I noticed were next to his sort of sleeping area there. And then of course there's a small little uh, table here for tea as well. And as we turn to the right, we also see a small door in that in the movie, this is where Lin comes through to intercept Shihiro for the first time. Uh, she was bringing Kamaji, I think, some tea and uh, ended up getting roped into the events of the movie. So in my build, I chose to make this an area for uh, all the servants to live and work. Um, you'll see a little bit more kind of what that means in a second, but in this the first area here, as soon as we go through this door, I noticed that there was a small ironing board and like a tiny little screenshot in, in the movie when Lynn opened the door. So I thought, you know, a place this big would probably have a huge laundry room for all of the towels and linens and things like that for the guests. So I created a, a laundry room for this build, which doesn't exist in the movie, but I think ultimately makes a lot of sense and makes this build feel a little bit more realistic. And then we also have a break room. This was something that, um, again, was not in the movie, but feels sort of fashioned after some of the um, areas that we see in the movie. And again, just adds a little bit of functionality as well. And as we make our way through here, we're going to be entering the servant community. So this is where all of the people that work in the onsen live. Um, and this is based off of a screenshot in the movie where uh, you see all these different people that are kind of like working and living together. There are all these crisscrossing staircases and various levels where you can see everybody kind of talking to one another. There's clothing hanging around. I think there's like a barber shop actually uh, in one of the screenshots that I took. So I wanted to recreate that for this build. And what we're looking at here is um, a communal bathing area that is just for the servants. So in this area, I created, I believe, uh, six or seven apartments. And they're all very similar from one to the next, but I couldn't, they're pretty small. And so I couldn't fit a toilet or a bathing area in any of them. And so um, I thought it would make sense anyway for both of those places to be communal in a place like this. And as we go through here, we will get our first view of the living quarters for all of the workers of the onsen. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how this area came out. It's two stories. And uh, I just wanted this to feel really lived in, and I wanted this to feel like a space that is being used by the people that are living here. And so we can see in the center of the area, we have a little performance stage in each one of the apartments. We're only going to look at one of them very quickly, but we'll see uh, an overview of all the spaces at the end of this video. Um, but in all the apartments, I also included skill building objects, different skill building objects in each one. Again, just in case you want to spend some time here. I thought that that was kind of an interesting thing to have in an onsen, um, and again, it just kind of added to uh, the the realism of a space like this. That you know, each of the people that you know essentially dedicate their lives to working here um, has their own personality and the things that they're interested in. Here we can see an example of one of the apartment units that I created. All of the apartment units have two or three beds and one skill building object, which is here. We can see the candle making station, um, and then they also have a small kitchen as well. And then, as I mentioned before, the bathing area and the toilets are both communal, uh, located on the second basement level of this area. And then here we just get a, another snapshot of the sort of center of the community. And then we also have, you can see here, sort of a warehouse door. 
This building is massive, and I actually ran out of sets that I could create. <laughs> and so I had some dead space here on the bottom basement level, and I decided to create sort of a receiving area and a storage area for, you know, all of the business that happens here. So this is nothing that, uh, again, is, is referenced from the actual movie itself, but it is something that helps extend the atmosphere and, and kind of create the vibe for the space. So we're just gonna rush through here really quick just so you can get a look at what is included. Um, in the second room here, we have a ton of lumber. Uh, we have a dumpster down here as well for waste disposal, which I thought, again, just added to the feeling of this being a real place. And then very quickly, we're gonna check out the final room of this sort of receiving area, which is actually storage for the entire onsen. So right to the left here, if I ever turn, here we go, right to the left here, uh, this is a little sneak peek of the aesthetic of the interiors of the onsen, uh, which we're going to get to very shortly. But you can see here we have some extra laundry bins and we have a lot of pots sitting around. We have a, a screen. We have those little space heaters as well that came with this snowy escape pack, some trash cans. But yeah, this is just a little storage area that felt practical and it felt like it made sense and also helped fill up space without uh, feeling sort of like a useless area of the build. So we'll go through the second warehouse door here, which is not the one that we came in, but it is a few doors down from it. And we will enter back into the sort of community area. And at this point, we're gonna head back up to the first floor of the onsen and check out the primary bathing area for the guests. So this is the very famous area where Shihiro tends to a stink spirit, which ends up not being a stink spirit. And so just to show you sort of the inner workings here, we'll make our way back the same way that we came. Uh, we're on the second floor of the community here, which is technically the third basement level. And right in front of us right now is the bathing area for the servants of the onsen. And actually, I didn't mention this earlier, but right here to the left, those doors there are the toilets as well. We have little individual toilet rooms for the people that are living in this area. So we'll go back through the boiler room. We will say bye to Kamaji for now. And in this small room where Shihiro enters, there's a little door here. And uh, this little door is the primary sort of connection to the main level area. I do have a little sneaky TV here. This is the only technology that is in the build, <laughs> but I thought it'd be really funny if the folks that worked here had this like little sneaky area that they would all like huddle around a TV in, <laughs> maybe during their break or something. So as we go up this ladder, we are now on the first basement level and these stairs lead up to the main entrance. So remember where we are, we'll come back to that. I'll point it out later. But now we're going to start back at the entrance, and here we are at the true guest entrance of the onsen. And here is a preview of the sort of stylings and how uh, I interpreted this build in The Sims 4. So we can see here we have some really cool lanterns hanging in the entrance, and as soon as we go through this little hallway here, I did want this place, of course, to be functional as an onsen. So the first door here uh, that's directly in front of us is the bathing area that your Sims will need to use before going into any of the hot springs. And so here we have, I think it's four different showers. We have some sinks here. Um, and of course we have a really nice view to the outdoor gardens as well. And then uh, here we have one locker. These are kind of scattered throughout the build just to make it a little bit easier for Sims to navigate around. So here we have one locker. And so we'll head back out to the main hallway here. On the right side, we see the entrance that we just came in from. And then straight ahead is the area for the foreman. So this is where the foreman sits and oversees the operations of the main bathing area. Here's where Shihiro goes and tries to negotiate for some bath tokens. And you can see here, I also scattered some bath tokens on his desk as well, just for a little bit of realism. Uh, which I thought was a nice touch. And then on the uh, opposite side of the main hallway here, on the opposite side of the foreman's desk, this is where the sort of main central locker room area is. And then this is also where the main bathrooms are. So you can see we have a bunch of lockers here. There are two toilets and some sinks as well. So everybody can feel good and prepped and ready to go and enjoy a nice soak in the onsen. And as we move through here, we get our first glimpse of the primary bathing area of the Spirited Away bathhouse. Now, first off, I'm really happy with how this came out. I will put a disclaimer out there and say that this area in the movie has a very iconic look with hand-painted trees all over the paneling around this area. And many other simmers have created this before, and I could not think of a better way 
to recreate those and what has already been done by others. And I didn't want to just copy somebody else's design. So instead, I chose to use the tile work that came with the Snowy Escape Pack to use here on the walls um, because it really replicates what many real world onsen actually look and feel like. And I thought it was a nice sort of nod to the way onsen show up in the you know, Sims 4 game world. Um, again, without trying to take somebody else's design or try and replicate something that really you can't do super, super accurately in The Sims 4. But with that out of the way, I do love how this area came out. Uh, you can see we have one massive onsen in here, and then we also have two hot tubs. And as we move closer, you can see there's a bunch of algae and seaweed around this hot tub. And then on the ground, we do have a small pile of bath tokens that No Face gave to Shihiro when he was trying to impress her at one point in the movie. And then another iconic aspect of this area of the bathhouse is that it is three stories, I mean more than that, but in my build it's three stories tall. And so here we are getting our first glimpse of the balcony area of the second floor. And so you can kind of get an idea of the general look and feel of the bathhouse at this point. Here's just a nice overhead shot of how the area is laid out. And um, yeah, I think it's really cool. I'm really happy with how this looks. One of the I think defining characteristics of the bathhouse in Spirited Away is that it feels incredibly vibrant and rich in color. And I really wanted to do my best to recreate that and make it feel very luxurious and warm and inviting. So we'll see a little bit more of the rest of the bathhouse um, shortly. But for now, we're gonna go through these massive doors that are on the opposite end of the main bathing area. And uh, we've now entered a sort of connecting hallway that gets us to the second floor. In this area, we have some additional lockers. And then also, this was just some open space that I had, and so I created a small storage area as well. So this, again, is for the workers. We have some extra benches in here, some stacked up towels, and just little odds and ends that are needed to help run the bathhouse. And so as we go back out into the hallway, we see two areas here. So we have, um, I'll get back to that. First, we're gonna go through this little door. And here is just a little area to relax. I have a chessboard in here and a small um, sofa for your Sims to take a little nap on if they would like to. And th this is the back of the build at this point. So uh, those shoji screens are from the back of the build that we saw earlier. And then as we come back into this hallway, you can see we have two staircases. The one that goes down, if you're looking closely, you can see there's a ladder there. That's the way that we got back up to the main floor from the boiler room. So we'll go back down there in a bit, but now we'll make our way up to the second floor. And the second floor uh, essentially has a balcony that is the perimeter of the building. And you can see from this floor, as we just saw, this is just above the main bathing area. Here is a really nice shot of all of these sort of interior designs. A big thing for me with this build is, again, I wanted it to feel very, very detailed and as close to the movie as I can get it. But I also wanted it to be playable and not um, overly stuffed with details and decorations. So towards the end of the build, we will uh, hop into gameplay and just take a quick look at how the overall build looks when you're actually playing the game and not in this first person view. And so as we make our way through these doors here, we get into our first sort of entertainment area. Uh, if you are staying in a ryokan or an onsen, um, perhaps you're being entertained by somebody while you're there. And it's very common to have these spaces that are multi-purpose. So they may be dining, they may be for playing games and things like that. And so I wanted to include some spaces like that to make this feel a little bit more realistic. So the first one we saw, we just had a card table or a game table there that our Sims were playing at. And then before checking out the second one over there, um, just for some perspective, I figured we could kind of hop outside and just do a little snapshot of where we are in the build right now. So if we go outside of this archway here, you can see that we're on the, the central balcony in the front of the building. Um, so just to get a sense of space, that's where we're hanging out right now. This is technically the second floor of the build. And then as we go back inside, we have our second entertainment area. And here we have um, a little hot pot set up. Now, this is not functional just because of uh, how I set it up with the little coffee table and the ottomans. But there is an area that has a functional hot pot, which we'll see in a little bit. And then I, again, just for some realism, because these are multi-purpose rooms, I thought it would be really nice to have some small storage areas off to the side where the objects that are not in use would be stored temporarily um, as they were set for the different guests that were coming in. So both entertainment areas have staircases that lead up to the third floor. 
Now, these areas were actually modeled after the uh, sleeping quarters for the servants that we see where Lin and Shahiro are living. In the movie, these areas are actually on the perimeter of the building and they are very high up. With the amount of space that I have for this build, I wasn't able to completely accurately recreate that as we saw the sort of communal space, the community for the servants are in the basement levels instead, but I did want to have some visual kind of reference to those types of areas in the build as well. So in this area, we see that we have a bunch of wall storage that we see Lin taking uh, futons out of for Shihiro and clothing for Shihiro. Uh, and then we also have two sort of like sleeping areas where here I'm just using them instead for kind of recreational areas. And we have two Kotatsu tables. And if you're paying attention, there's also a ladder here that leads up to the fourth floor, which we will check out in a little bit. So here we are out into the balcony area of the third floor. There's not a lot going on on these levels because the way that I've laid this build out, and again, you'll see this at the end of the video, but both the second and third levels have internal balconies and external balconies. And this was so we could get the look and feel of, you know, the interior and exterior of the building. It just takes up a lot of space. So there's not a ton of usable space on either one of these floors, but I did try to fit in as much as I could. So you can see here on this level, we do have a bar. And then just off screen, there's another Kotatsu table that has a hot pot. Um, if you would like to use that with your sims. And then here's just a, a quick overhead view again of all three levels of the bathhouse. So we're going to go back down to the main level here. We're going to go back through these two big doors. And instead of going up the staircase, we're actually going to take the staircase down to the first basement level. Now, in this version of the bathhouse, the first basement level is where all the accommodations for the guests are. As we go down these steps, First, you're going to see a very quick shot just of some toilets. Uh, there's a bathroom here just for gameplay reasons. I figured it'd be easier and it makes sense. I also had a little bit of extra space. So that red room you see there is a bathroom. And then as we turn around, you'll also see a ladder. This is the ladder that we took up from the boiler room before taking the stairs back up to the main level. And then we will bypass that for now and instead just go to the central hall of the I'll call this the guest floor. So this floor has a bunch of different areas that for the folks that are staying overnight, as I mentioned. And first we're looking at a massage table here, which I thought, of course, we need to have those someplace in the build. Those are the massage tables from Spa Day. We have a small locker area. Again, just made sense for gameplay. We do have a nice big sauna here as well, which I thought, you know, fit really well. This is sort of like a private sauna that's not necessarily available just to the public that comes, but the folks that choose to stay overnight. And then as we make our way down this hallway, the first door on the right here is another onsen. <laughs> so this onsen is just for the people that are staying overnight. Um, I thought it would be nice for them to have some of their own accommodations. You know, I wanted this to feel luxurious and just as decadent and beautiful and over the top and rich as the bathhouse in the movie does. And so there are a lot of onsen throughout the building for your sims to use and explore. And then uh, as we go down the hallway, here we're looking at one of the guest rooms that I've created. There are three of them on this level. We'll just check out the one because they all look very, very similar. But we have a nice bed here, a space heater, and then a small little desk with some brochures. And then each of these rooms does have their own individual bathroom. There's a separate toilet room because that's very common in Japan. And then uh, the room that had the sink that we just saw there actually has a small bath in there as well. Um, just, you know, for convenience and it seemed like it made sense. And then as we go down the hallway, we enter these two beautiful golden doors. As we go through the beautiful golden doors, we have uh, sort of like our, our central entertainment area. So we have more kotatsu tables here. In my mind, this is an area where you're going and the food is uh, brought to you. There's a service that is provided when you're eating here. So we have the area to relax with the kotatsu tables. And then we also have some more formal dining in the room next to it. Um, I just thought this was a nice touch. And then at the very end of this hallway and the final room in this sort of area of the guest accommodations, we have a really nice little bar. Um, so this is the second bar in the build, <laughs> but I thought this was much more conveniently located than the other one. And just behind the bar, we also have the kitchens for the bathhouse. Now, there is like maybe one screenshot, I think. There's one scene in the movie where we see the kitchens. 
This is very loosely based off that um, because it was such a quick scene. Basically, it was just messy. That was the whole thing. It was, <laughs> it was just very, very messy. Uh, so I tried to recreate that. And then also another notable aspect too, um, when Shihiro is running on the outside of the building, we see one of the chefs stick his head out the window smoking a cigarette so I wanted to include a nice little window in there as well and in hindsight too the kitchen is much smaller than the laundry room <laughs> so if I if I would do anything different I think that's maybe one of the only things I think the kitchen probably could have been bigger or at least the same size as the laundry room and now we are going to go all the way back up to the third floor we're going to go back up to the area where Shihiro and Lin sleep and take that ladder that we saw earlier up to the fourth and final floor of the building. And this is Yubaba's quarters. Now listen, this, this area of the build is tight. Uh, I had to fit a lot of rooms up here. So here we are walking through the many doors that Shihiro is essentially dragged through uh, before getting into Yubaba's office. So we'll move very quickly through each of these doors here and we will come back. You can see there's an extra door over there. We'll come back to that in a little bit. But first, we're going to check out Yubaba's office. This was so much fun to work on because it looks so much different than the rest of the build. Essentially, everything on this entire floor that's dedicated just to Yubaba looks so different than everything else. So it was a lot of fun to play with. I think it looks really accurate to the movie. Uh, here's the big roaring fireplace that she has with the portrait of herself above it. And then either side, on either side of her desk, she has a portrait of herself and her sister. I thought using these, these two portraits of Ghidri kind of fit the bill. But yeah, here's Yubaba's working area on her desk. Uh, we don't see it here, but I did include um, some signed an autograph from the Get Famous pack, thinking like, you know, that could be her, her contract that she wrote with Shihiro. And then just beside her office is her child's room. So this is really tight in here, but I do like how it came out. Probably the most notable thing about this area in the bathhouse is that it feels so different than everything else. It's so bright, it's so vibrant. And one of the things that I love about this space is that there are murals around the entire room because, you know, Yubaba doesn't let her child out. So she has these like paintings of different fantastical places all around the room. And in The Sims, I was able to recreate that by uh, having my Sim paint a mural and I put that up on the wall. And I think it like is a really nice nod to how it actually looks in the movie. But yeah, that's Bo's room. Of course, there are like gifts stuffed everywhere and toys all over the place. Um, and it's really tight. I'm just warning every other room that we're about to look at is super tight. They're really small rooms because I didn't have a lot of space to work with. Here's another shot of Yubaba's office. And again, just for space and to kind of help understand where we are in the build, I just wanted to take a quick look at her balcony outside. She does have this really beautiful marble tile just outside of her office, which is really nice. And we'll go back inside and make our way back into the hallway leading up to her office. Here is a incredibly small bathroom for Yubaba. This actually is in the movie. Shihiro breaks into the bathhouse and by entering Yubaba's bathroom. Um, so it is meant to be on the perimeter of the building. I couldn't quite work that out for this build, but visually there are some sort of like aesthetic similarities to this bathroom and the one that's in the movie. But the one in the movie is much more grand and beautiful. <laughs> um, and then we'll go back to the uh, where we you can see there's the ladder that we came up from. And here we have Yubaba's personal kitchen. So she does actually have a kitchen. Again, it's just one very quick scene in the movie, but um, here is her kitchen, really cozy. She has a fireplace in there. Um, she's actually kind of like recovering here, I think with the foreman and one other character that I'm forgetting, but uh, Haku confronts her there for the first time. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to include the kitchen. And then here is a room that doesn't have a visual reference, but I did think it made sense to have a bedroom for Yubaba. And actually, if you wanted to live on this lot, that whole fourth floor is really a complete house. Everything that you could possibly need is there, except for maybe skill building objects that you could just place in. So <laughs> I thought it makes sense to have a bedroom. And that those are all the major rooms. That's like all the major rooms of the build. Um, really quickly before we go, though, I did want to show you how everything kind of looks in gameplay because there are a lot of areas here that span multiple floors. And I also wanted to show just kind of like the layout for each floor. So we're going to hop into the gameplay view here really quick and just kind of take a look at some areas. The first one we're looking at here is the community space for all of the servants. I just wanted to get a better look of, you know, how that space looks. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> I really, I like how that came out so much. It really looks like the... Uh, set in the movie. 
And then here is an overview of the boiler room as well. This spans two floors, so it's kind of difficult to see everything in first person mode. But here's just a better shot too of the boiler and all the kind of mechanics that went into creating that. And then here is the main bathing area on the first floor. I just kind of wanted to get a, you know, give you a feel of what this actually feels like and looks like in gameplay. Here's how everything is connected. I think the layout makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it's pretty easy to navigate and kind of make your way around. The Sims may feel otherwise, but, <laughs> but yeah, here's a look at the second floor and all of these sort of decor uh, around the perimeter on the balcony. And then we'll make our way up to the third floor as well, which has a slightly different feel, but um, everything hopefully feels like very harmonious and uh, similar to how the set and the bathhouse looks in the movie. And then here we're going to check out um, just a top down view so you can see the layout of all these spaces and how they're connected together. So here is the space that we checked out most recently. This is Yubaba's quarters where we have Yubaba's office, her balcony, Bo's bedroom, Yubaba's bedroom, a bathroom and a kitchen, as well as the hallway that Shihiro gets dragged through at the beginning of the movie. I guess that's almost like the middle of the movie. Uh, here is the third floor where we have the functioning hot pot. And we also have two rest areas, uh, multiple kotatsu tables, and then also a bar area as well. And then on the second level, we have the card table for your Sims to play. And otherwise, not much going on up here. So this is just a pretty decorative level, I will say. <laughs> Here's the main bathing area where we have our indoor onsen, our outdoor onsen, some hot tubs, the primary locker area, and the primary bathrooms. Here is the first basement area where we have all the guest accommodations. So we have the dining room, the kitchen, the bar, three guest bedrooms, uh, a onsen for them to use, as well as massage tables and the sauna. Here is the second basement level where we have two apartments for the servants. Uh, we also have a communal bathing area for them and the break room and the laundry room. And then the final basement level where we have, what is it, five apartments and then a receiving and storage area, which um, just helped complete the build and round everything out. Ooh, y'all, this is a big building. <laughs> I think that I was able to include every scene from the movie in this build in some way, and then some. Um, there are so many rooms in this building, so many different areas for your Sims to explore and to take cute pictures in uh, and just spend some time maybe with friends and family relaxing. So I hope that you have enjoyed this build. It was so much fun to work on. I've been working on this for over a month at this point on and off, so it feels really good to be done with it and be able to share it with y'all. So I hope that you enjoyed. This build is now available on the gallery if you would like to add it to your game. As a reminder, um, I think the best lot to place this is the one that I built it on, which is the 50 by 50 lot in the snowy escape world. My name on the Sims 4 gallery is the same as it is here, which is just Patrick Creates. If you like this build, please consider liking the video. Um, I would really appreciate that and YouTube appreciates it as well. <laughs> um, and if you like this kind of stuff, one of my favorite things to do in the Sims 4 is create fan builds from my favorite movies and games and TV shows and things like that. So. Um, please consider subscribing if you're not already and come back next week because maybe I'll be making something from your favorite content as well. If you have any ideas for future builds, please feel free to leave a comment or if you have any feedback or thoughts about this build, I would love to know what you think. That's it. I said all the YouTube things. <laughs> that is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time y'all.